When I'm talking to professionals about the family illness of alcoholism, I describe that to begin with, alcoholism has many symptoms. And one of the symptoms is that it affects relationships. It affects relationships with spouses, it affects relationships with kids, it affects relationships with, with physicians, and many physicians recognize that immediately. But spouses and children are often stressed uh, a great deal in ways that uh, fall into two, real, two categories, really. One is oftentimes they can be the, the victims of meanness, cruelty, and abuse. But the other way is that they often become the caretakers. And the kind of syndromes that you see in uh, caretakers of people with other kinds of chronic uh, medical illnesses overtake the, the family members. So that you, feel, you often see that the family members are beginning to neglect their own medical care as they begin to focus all of their time, all of their energies, all of their attention on the alcoholic, trying to uh, help the alcoholic get by when the alcoholic is neglecting their own care. Denial is the number one thing, it's the number one feature of the disease of alcoholism. And with the denial becomes the ability to blame. And so in a family where there is alcoholism present, blame is always a key factor within the family. The alcoholic wants to blame everybody else for their behavior, wants to blame everything on other people so they can justify continuing to drink. And the family, of course, has the luxury of being able to focus on the alcoholic and blame the alcoholic for all issues going on within the family. If you're a professional working in the field of addiction or even not in the field, you're just a professional helping people, one of the things I would ask you to do is, first of all, move away from the pathology of the family system and move into what is the resiliency of this family? What are the strengths of this family? What are the gifts of this family? And what are the things that are working well? So that you can invite that family into opening up about what's really going on. The person may be coming to you because they're having marital problems. They may be coming to you because the children are acting out. They may be coming to you because they're depressed. They may have a series of symptomatic um, pieces that they're presenting to you However, the underlying piece is that there's alcoholism in that family system. And you may not see it right away yourself because that's not how they're presenting. So the obvious question is to ask, is there drinking going on in your family system? Is somebody in your family in trouble with alcohol or drugs? It's a simple, straightforward, direct question to ask any family member who comes to you. And never assume that these other presenting symptoms are what's going on that they may be secondary to the primary illness of addiction. Alcoholism can live far past when the alcoholic decides to put down the drink. It just takes on different forms. So what we see is that the family doesn't know how to make boundaries. Um, parents describe their children as best friends. Kids become what we call parentified. They take care of the parents instead of the parents taking care of them. We find that social relationships suffer when someone's been drinking, and many times in recovery, the social relationships still suffer because the, um, the adult hasn't been socializing. But Al-Anon and Alateen also provide, if you will, a social laboratory. They're people to interact with um, in healthy, productive ways. You know, when someone breaks their leg, we don't tell them go out and run a race. We have to teach them how to walk slowly and they might need physical therapy. And then they increase the amount they walk and then they can run. When a family member of an alcoholic um, 
starts through the journey of recovery. They need to learn social skills again. They need to learn how to laugh. They need to learn when it's okay to cry. They need to learn that they can get angry. And Al-Anon and al are safe places to do that. Productive treatment for the family means, first, teaching the family that they're not the cause of the alcoholic's illness. They have to get the proper care to the alcoholic. That means turning the care of the alcoholic over to the professional. No longer buffering the alcoholic from the natural consequences of their illness. Recognizing that it's an illness, getting the alcoholic to the physician, to the psychiatrist, uh, to the proper treatment center so that the professionals can take care of the chronic medical illness that the alcoholic has. And then turning the focus onto themselves and looking at what are the kinds of problems that have been engendered within themselves by their own self-neglect? Are they getting the care that they need and are they doing the self-care that they need to do? And very often that's getting themselves to Alateen and Al-Anon in order to even discover what, what self-care means. First of all, they're coming to you so you want to be able to honor the fact that they've sought help. You want to empower the family by talking about, again, the positive things that are going on while still identifying that drinking is the primary illness in the family system. Drinking or drug addiction is the primary illness. So the productive treatment for them would be, first of all, that they're taking action to come to you. And you may recommend that the family seek out uh, an educational program or a treatment program. You may also have them uh, read some literature around addiction. So you're beginning the process with them, and then you you may invite them to go to some 12-step meetings, like Al-Anon meetings, to get them involved right away with a community of people that can support them. So along with them coming to you as their primary therapist, they're also beginning to develop a support system outside of your office. And I think that's probably the most productive start for a family in the uh, treatment of this illness. One of the key issues that comes into the idea of recovery and abstinence uh, from alcoholism is the idea that abstinence must be present. Um, that's not always the case. Abstinence occurs hopefully with recovery, but for the clinician, the clinician needs to understand that um, there may be abstinence without recovery, which is oftentimes uh, far more difficult to deal with for the family than for somebody where abstinence is accompanies recovery. Recovery with periodic abstinence may be a step up from where the family's at. And so to focus on the recovery rather than the abstinence, uh, oftentimes it's a more productive technique, particularly when dealing with the family because the family members do not have the control or the power over whether or not the alcoholic is going to continue to drink or use. For them to move the focus onto their own recovery, to, to understand their own role in the system and to be able to deal with their own feelings and expectations and behaviors, that's paramount for the clinician in dealing with the family. I've been doing social work and uh, working with clients for over 17 years now, and I've seen Al-Anon and al work uh, over and over with clients that I've worked with. You can tell when they start going to Al-Anon and al it makes a huge difference in their life, really, and in their progress in terms of uh, their own recovery and making a difference in their family life. As a professional, when I'm looking at a family to see whether or not that family is really recovering, uh, what, I would, what I would see is that when I'm meeting with any one member of the family, they would begin talking to me about what their own needs are first. If I'm meeting with the family as a whole, I, I would recognize that the family as a whole has a, a generosity of spirit for each other and uh, has their... Um, problems in a true perspective so that uh, there would be a, a lack of drama about what the problems are 
that they're not blowing their problems out of proportion, but they have their problems in a true perspective. And they can draw on the resources of each other in being able to meet those problems. Uh, and also that there'd be a minimum of blaming and a minimum of, uh, of scapegoating in that problem. Progressive developments in the field of whole family recovery have uh, shown many documented successes. When families are involved in treatment, the family system improves dramatically. When family members seek treatment, they are able to find themselves as more stable individuals. And they are able to use the skills that they learn in recovery in many other ways. These skills are generalizable. So although in many families, people would say this experience is not one that they would wish on their worst enemy, they are able to gain much from the experience and in the end can find themselves grateful for their recovery and grateful for the skills and supports that they have been able to gain as a result of going through such a difficult experience.